Welcome back to the Now Morning Show on this Wednesday morning. Now, the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries is joining us to discuss a new pest which attacks tomatoes. Could you believe it? Joining us this morning is the um, acting entomologist from the Agriculture Ministry, Mr. Rishi Mohansing. Mr. Mohansing, good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Now, when I read the brief, I'm like an acting entomologist. What is that? All right, so the, and, uh, in synopsis, it's the study of insects insect population, how they grow, how they multiply, and mm -hmm. things like that. That's okay. the main, the core of... That, 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 that's the core of yeah. what it is. Yeah, many and other things, what... And what do you do specifically at the ministry? Right, so at the ministry, basically, like I said, we manage pest population, so we do surveys throughout our country to see if we have pests coming in into the country, pests that we also have in our country, how we are going to manage them. We come up with integrated pest management approaches to, for farmers and then to control these pests. Now, I know the one that we're going to be discussing this morning is the de Tutor Absoluta. Tutor the one Absoluta. That, can you tell us about it? Right. So, Tutor Absoluta, or what we refer to as tomato leaf miner, this pest is relatively new to our country. Just a few months ago, we picked it up through our surveillance activity in our country. And it's a moth, and it's tiny like a mosquito. Mm. It feeds at night, but it causes a lot of damage. It attacks tomato as its main crop but it also attacks peppers and melon gin. Now, when you say it, it attacks, it, it, it lands on the plant um, or the, the uh, tomato and begins to eat it or something? Right. So because it's an insect, it has four life cycles. So the adult will lay eggs on your plant. Mm. The eggs will hatch into what we call a larva. People refer to it as, as a, a worm or a caterpillar. And that caterpillar or worm or larva, mm. it enters the fruit, it can enter the plant and feed, causing tunnels. Now, for the fruit, for instance, when no, it... No, is it, is it what we're seeing on the screen here? Correct, wow. correct. Okay. And now we all are familiar with the tomato, how shiny and nice yes. and smooth yes, it is yes, supposed yes. to look. Right, so with this um, pest, you are going to get holes on your fruit, and then you will get secondary infection coming in, causing it to rot. Mm. Right? And so countries that have tutor absoluta, you get almost 80 to 100% losses. So you can lose an entire crop. That's how serious this pest is. So this is not something where you want to take the tomato and cut off the bad part and still eat the good part. You have no. to destroy the entire thing. Well, because the lava is inside the f um, fruit, cutting off it and things like that wouldn't really make sense. Mm -hmm. Remember, especially the aesthetics of the fruit. When you go to the market you, and you see a fruit that is not looking the way we are accustomed to it looking, you will not purchase it. Mm -hmm. So that is a setback to farmers who are actually produce in tomato. Now, why do you think they are attracted to that particular vegetable? Right. Now, Pests on the whole, just like humans, we like specific food, if you want to say that. Certain pests will like specific types of crop. Mm. So the main host, like we said, is the solanaceous family. And tomato, peppers, and melon gin belong to that family. So they like tomato out of all. Out of all. Yes, <laughs> like I say, this is, the, um, this is the first time we've picked up this pest. How did it move? Where did it move from? And how did it end up in TNT? Right. So um, parts of Central, um, um, South America, sorry, Europe, even Haiti, Venezuela, in the Caribbean, we have this pest. So mm -hmm. as of now, we don't know exactly how it came into our country, but we, we picked it up in our country. Now, yes. we picked it up on the east-west corridor, St. George East, St. George West, and we also started seeing it going into the Carony County. So it is not um, totally I in the entire country. It's in small pockets in the country, but we have it. And it's spreading. And it's spreading. Is there a way to for us to prevent it from spreading? Right. So as the ministry, like we said, we do these studies to know if something comes in and how to manage it. So we have what we refer to as an IPM approach to manage this pest. And that includes cultural measures, chemical measures, and also trapping. So when we talk about cultural measures, it's basically the normal thing that you will do when you grow a crop. You control your weeds. You, um, if you have fallen fruits, you pick them up, you um, burn them, because more than likely they will have the pests in them. Mm. But most importantly, you need to look at your plant for your symptoms. Now, the classical symptom that you will see on your plant is what we refer to as a blotch on the leaves of your plant. Mm. Now, a tomato plant, the leaves will be green, mm. right? So when we refer to this blotch, we are talking about a spot, an irregular spot on your plant. Now, the spots usually start off clear, and then they turn brown. Mm. So it's something easy to notice, mm. right? We are not asking people to go and look for the um, pest because it comes out and feeds at night and the larva is in the fruit. But you can see the leaf symptoms, right? So you look out for things like that and depending on the extent of the damage, you remove the plant and burn it in the field as well. Eh? You are not taking it out of the field. Mm. 
So those are some of the cultural things that you do. When we talk about chemicals, now on our ministry's website, agriculture.gov.tt, we have additional information on the list of chemicals that are recommended for this pest. We are not just saying go and spray a pesticide. There are certain pesticides, insecticides that is, that will work for this pest. So we are recommending to people, if you decide to go down that route, you find the information. Now basic ones, we have a combination. So you have the synthetic type um, insecticides like your abomectins, which is active ingredient. You also have your biological ones, right? So for those who want to go the organic route, you also have chemicals that are suited for that. Right, so there's a combination. You even have your azadirectins, which is referred to as your neem line based products. So you have organic products and you have your synthetic products. And the final thing in terms of managing is trapping. Now, just like how a fly trap, for those who are familiar with a fly trap, where the fly actually sticks on the trap, right, basically you have similar ones like that for this pest. Mm. Now, attached to this trap, you have a female pheromone. Mm. So it's the female pheromone of the adult pest. And when you put that pheromone in there, it attracts the male to the trap. The male comes to the trap and they stick on the sticky pad and that is how you get rid of them. So by reducing the male population in the environment, naturally you will reduce the total population because you will not be getting mating. So it's a combination yeah. approach. So like for people who do not want to use chemicals, there are other measures you can use. Now, I know that you would have mentioned that one of the signs you can look out for is the, the leaves and how they will change color. But right. we just saw a picture on the screen with the, w w I think it was the lava, but it's very, very small, so it's unnoticeable yes. to the naked eye. Yes. So you have to look at the leaf or even that little um, residue that they would leave at the end of it. Correct. So like on your fruit, under the sepal area, which is those little leaves on the top of your fruit, where you see the holes, you will see the, that granular kind of frost, we call them, which yes. is the droppings of the lava. I think that's it on the screen there. Well, those are the eggs. Those are the eggs. Yeah. Wow, um, they're very, very small. On the green fruit, you mm -hmm. will see the arm, um, the the frass. So those are classical symptoms. You normally don't see those things on your plant. Yes. Right. So by just looking at that, and that is what we are advising farmers, even home gardeners who just have one tomato, two tomato tree behind their house, mm -hmm. you could have this pest. So you need to go out and look for the symptoms. Now, for the small farmers or the ones who are doing the home gardens, do you um, would you advise them to do the chemical? Would you advise them to do the mass trappings? Which one do you think works in which uh, sector? Right. So now, once uh, this is the science behind it, once a pest comes into a country, the first thing you try to do is what we call a quick knockdown, and a quick knockdown is the chemical approach, mm -hmm. right? So we recommend that they do that. However, if they choose not to, well, then you have the cultural and you also have the trapping, but. Mm -hmm. We want to get rid of this pest mm. before it spreads further and cause even more damage. The good thing I must say um, is that we are not seeing symptoms on our plants as yet. Okay. What we are picking up is in our traps that we have in our country, di different areas, we are picking up the adults in those traps. So we may not be seeing any manifestation of the symptoms on our plants mm. yet. And when you say the symptoms, you mean what? The, the blotching right. or the holes okay. and things like that. Okay. So that doesn't mean that you do not have the pest. Right, like I say, you need to observe because you could see the symptoms, mm -hmm. right? But for now, we, thank God, we are not seeing the symptoms. Yeah, yeah. Now, in terms of the of the burning, because I'm wondering, will it? I mean, if you <coughs> decide to burn an entire um, tomato field, I mean, what's going to happen to the soil at the end of it? Right now, burning uh, to an extent is good because the potash, or, um, which is the ash, will be add to add nutrients to the soil. Okay. So. Because of the nature of this pest, you do not want to be removing infected material out of the field. So producers, farmers will know usually you remove, you cut down, you move it to the um, um, end of the field, yeah. windward side where you're not getting the wind coming into your field and you try to burn it. Now, the thing is you have to be careful. You do not want it to escape yes. and things like that. Yes, so yes, yes. If it is, let's say, like smaller acreages, you have like um, those metal drums that you can set up. Some farmers have those things in their field where you can put the material in there and you can burn them, which is a safer option as well. I don't want people to panic. So people should not just go and start spraying chemicals on their crops. They need to identify and look to see if they're seeing any marks of those uh, two right. types and of uh, The good thing is all our officers in the ministry are trained. Right. You are unclear. Like I say, you can visit the ministry's website or you can contact any of our agricultural officers. Our officers are there to guide you on exactly how to approach this. 
so you're not alone, right? They have all the information. They will recommend whether you should use a chemical or depending on the extent of the damage, most of the times they will come out and visit, okay. right? So if they see the extent of the damage, they may recommend a chemical or they may just recommend a cultural measure. So you're n our producers, our farmers, they are not alone in this. We no, are there to support them. Of course, and before you go, I know we're on this topic, but what other sort of noti notifiable pests should we be looking out for in our gardens? Right, so for now, now over time, the notifiable status changes. Mm -hmm. So for now, tuta absoluta is that, um, a notifiable pest. Mm -hmm. And for those who are unfamiliar, what that means basically, if you pick up that in your field, by law, you are supposed to report it to your closest agricultural office. If you don't do that, a fine of $5,000 is attached to it. Now, I want to clear up something. If you have it and you report it, you will not be charged. Right. So I don't want people to get scared yes, about that. Yes, yes, yes. If you have it and you do not report it and you're found out to have it, then is where the law comes in. Because, of course, it can spread and it can damage. Correct. Yes. Because, and the nature of this pest, one female can lay 260 eggs. The life cycle is 30 days. So in 30 days, you can get total destruction of a field. That is how serious this pest is. And of course, before you go, just tell us um, anything else you want to add before we close and just tell us where we can get more information about how to deal with this pest. Right. So like I said, if you pick up any symptoms, sometimes you may see some symptoms, maybe looking like it, you're unsure, contact your ministry's office, agricultural office. We have set up an email address, cesentomology at gmail.com where people can take photos and send it via email so we can identify it. And you can also visit our ministry's website, that's agriculture.gov.tt, where you can get, we have brochures, we have flyers, and further information on this pest. Well, Mr. Mohan Singh, thank you so much for joining us on now. Welcome. <laughs> and that was acting entomologist at the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries, Mr. Rishi Mohan Singh, just telling us about the tuta absoluta. Remember, farmers and those who have your home gardens, if you see this, please, please report it because you may get charged. We have so much more coming up on the Now Morning Show. Stay with us. <laughs>